Watching that Splatoon Direct was insane for me. Yeah! Oh my gosh, yes! 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 No, 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 oh my gosh, that brought back missiles. Dude, why is her forehead f***ing huge? And I'm here to help and cover just about everything that was shown throughout it, including things you may have missed. My name is Melo, and if you enjoy the video, please be sure to like and subscribe. And without hesitation, let's make a deep cut into it. We start off with extremely nice angles, showing off just how much bigger the base plaza is with its high-rising apartments and transit system, and over here we get a nice overview of the clothing shops we'll see a little bit later. At this angle we get a nice review of the stairs leading up into the lobby, ammo nights, and once again we see the lines of clothing shops on the left side of this alley. We then transition to basic gameplay for any newcomers, as most people pretty much expected, and I think it's safe to assume that like usual, the Junior will be the first weapon we pick up, and this default gear is definitely a big upgrade from the previous games with the torn yet pretty stylish shirt and the Velcro boots. Also note that the Junior is transparent now like seen on Nintendo's Twitter posts in the past. Our inkling gives a this way, which is shortly followed by introducing Turf War, which once again, we really shouldn't be surprised about, like come on now. Here in these little clips they show off what could very likely be victory poses for shooters and sloshers, which we've already seen in the past release date trailer, and also Brellas, Duelies, and Splatlings, which notably shows off footage of Nautilus for the very first time ever. And since it debuted in Splatoon 2, personally I'm not very surprised that they didn't really change the design that much compared to other weapons in the game so far. We see the bow tap shooting the ground which paints a really decent amount and then two fairly faster shots used to paint the wall, so it has me personally wondering if that firing rate was done on purpose, or if the both shots can shoot out faster when you jump, or if you're in the air. They finally mentioned the long-awaited info about the new movement mechanics called the Squid Surge and the Squid Roll. The Squid Surge seems to be a move that you can charge in order to dash quickly up walls, and the Squid Roll makes you dodge 180 degrees in the opposite direction you're moving from to avoid enemy fire. The debate about if the glow is a parry that completely reflects damage is slightly debunked, as it stated in the direct that it slightly reduces damage instead, but of course we'll just have to wait and see for more regarding that overall. Regarding maps coming to the game, they confirm a total of 12 playable stages on launch, which is a nice upgrade compared to the 8 that we had at the beginning of Splatoon 2, and even at that we're getting two more that will arrive at a later date. Coming new to Splatoon 3 are Scorch Gorge and Eel Tail Alley, which we've seen in trailers in the past. We get a much better look at Undertow Spillway and Mincemeat Metalworks, which were previewed for a few seconds on the Splatoon Twitter accounts. One unnamed stage that will arrive later that probably isn't too far from Scorch Gorge given its desert-like environment with giant squid-shaped structures in the back, and Hagglefish Market, which I must say is an amazing pun, is a pier filled with numerous street vendors and a few ink rails on both sides of the map near spawn. Coming back from Splatoon 1 are some amazing fan favorites including Museum Dolphonsino, which we already knew was returning, Hammerhead Bridge, which has apparently been renovated to connect Greater Inkopolis and the Splatlands to the point where its iconic giant stretch of greats is gone now, so it seems. C can we can we even still call it Hammerhead Bridge without that? Because honestly, it's not even iconic anymore, but but anyways, we have Mahi Mahi Resort returning, which I know has a huge amount of people, including me, that are excited to see it again, and thankfully they kept its amazing gimmick of revealing more turf during a match with the change in water levels. We see an image of what is without a doubt Flunder Heights returning from Splatoon 1 as well, and even with one single image, we can see a lot of changes to this map, including an added ledge to the main ramp down here, the pink pillow got shifted near the edge of the platform up here, and it's a little hard to make out, but the narrow trench area of the map has some ramps leading more downward, kind of into a pit area, which is pretty major and was never even part of the original map in Splatoon 1. On the right, we have a generally smaller spawn area than before, and heck, look Looking at the elevation of the entire map, it seems way like shorter and smaller than its original Splatoon 1 design, but honestly, it may be too early to tell and we'll just have to see in the future. Coming back from Splatoon 2, we have Inkblot Art Academy, Sturgeon Shipyard, Mako Mart, and Wahoo World, which for all of them I'm absolutely thrilled to see again, but I know some would probably say otherwise about, well, Wahoo World, which I completely understand. This is not an opinion. Let's start this off with a fact. That can literally not be disagreed with. And if you disagree with this, you are getting banned. This is the worst f***ing stage of the game. 
Like Nintendo has tweeted about before, all weapons from previous games will be available on launch. Except for Dual Squelcher, which I'm still very sad about, personally. And along with the new bow weapon called the Stringer, we get an entirely new weapon class called the Splatanas, which resemble either a squeegee or what I definitely believe to be like a windshield wiper. Almost like a roller, you can swipe at your opponents and deal small amounts of damage, or combo it with a charge swipe, which will one-shot people if you're close enough to them. It's also good to note that with every charge swipe, your character will lunge forward to better assure getting a kill. I think it's safe to say that this will definitely fit into the Slayer class of weapons, and I'm excited to see if they'll create other versions of it for the other weapon roles. With special weapons, we immediately start with three brand new ones called the Tacticooler, the Wavebreaker, and the Reef Slider. The Tacticooler is a fridge containing four drinks for each person on your team that will momentarily give player buffs such as increasing swim and run speed, increasing mobility with the squid roll, and decreasing the charge time to use the squid surge, and personally, I'm relieved this isn't a global special that you can just use from spawn whenever you please, Ink Armor, I'm looking at you. The Wavebreaker is a toned down version of Echolocator, one of the specials that were available in Splatoon 1 that you can place down anywhere on the map to mark nearby enemies. Every hit a circle deals from the special will slowly damage your opponents as well, and you can counter it by jumping over the waves at just the right time. Again, it's not a global special, so that is a big win from me. The Reef Slider is similar to the surfboard concept people have thought about in the past as a new special. You zoom quickly in a straight line on an inflatable shark, and then explode. Pretty simple, and I won't be too surprised if the inkling can be splatted while riding it, so it has a nice counter to it. In theory though, probably not the best special to use against Charger players. Returning specials straight from Splatoon 2 include Ultra Stamp, Inkjet, Inkstorm, Booyah Bomb, and please, 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 on my knees, please, for the love of all that is holy, do not, do not make them spammable. 10 of missiles. While they show off weapon kits, we see a new icon with Sheldon on it that is revealed to be a currency only acceptable at Ammonites called Sheldon Licenses. You obtain them by leveling up or increasing the freshness bonus on any specific weapon, and they can be used to buy any weapon early that's locked behind a certain level, meaning you don't need to level up to buy your favorite weapon anymore if you have enough licenses. Also looks like every weapon in the game is worth one license to simply buy, but worth three licenses if you want to obtain it early. Early. We see more neat animations from Inklings and Octolings around the plaza, including a game of rock, paper, scissors, nice foreshadowing Nintendo, before they show off the three main gear shops. Gnarly, Eddie, and Nails are the new hat shopkeepers, and included on the Takaraka mesh is a new ability called Sub Resistance Up, which is just like Bomb Defense Up in Splatoon 2, except it'll only reduce the effects of subs and not specials. Gel LaFleur is the clothing shopkeeper, Mr. Coco will be running the shoe department, we get a better look of one of the new pieces of gear from the new brand called Embers, and we get an entirely new gear ability called Intensify Action, which basically makes the squid roll and surge faster, which is absolutely amazing. Looking at this, I first thought this would be like Merch's older brother or something, but it turns out Puberty hit this kid like a bus. On the screen, we can see that money, sea snails, and ability chunks will still be used for changing gear. There's a new icon with a sea snail attached to it called Boost Star Power, which, confirmed from the official website, increases your star power altogether at the price of a couple sea snails. We can finally also change main abilities, as shown here, where we see a whopping 45 ability chunks needed to replace run speed for ink recovery, but in return, you get 6 ability chunks of the main ability you're taking out, so... Gee, thanks Nintendo. The lobby consists of the usual game modes of Turf War, Ranked, which is renamed to Anarchy Battles, probably to fit the theme of Chaos, and Private Battles. Anarchy Battle series looks to be similar to normal Ranked Battles, with you being alone playing with random players, and Anarchy Battle Open allows you to either play alone or with your friends on the same team. I'll try to go into more detail as to how I think Anarchy Battle will work in a future video, for those kind of confused about it. Returning are the same four ranked modes, Rainmaker, Splat Zones, Tower Control, and Clam Blitz, with a few more changes to some, but it looks like each one will include a new UI at the top that will tell you which team is currently in the lead at all times. Rainmaker will now have checkpoints, which I assume you'll have to clear before ultimately knocking out the game, just like in Tower Control, and you can now see which weapon is holding the Rainmaker too. The Rainmaker Carrier can also use the Squid Roll, and I wouldn't be surprised if it can do the Squid Surge as well. 
There's another new UI for Clan Blitz that tells us exactly how many clams each person has on either team. Another important change to note for the mode is that if you look very closely, the Enzeb that receives clams in this clip only needs 8 instead of 10 to make a power clam in order to score into the basket. You can see how they only receive 8 clams before it's formed, and the amount of clams on the yellow team decreases from 11 to only 3 once they score, which further confirms this. Despite this, the power clam is still worth 20 points, so I assume that's the only major change that they made to the mode, and I wonder if it will change how fast the mode plays in the future. Private battles still have the same 4v4 and maximum of 2 spectators format as before, and this time it looks like there's an option to recon a map for those who want to play with others, maybe without a way to complete the objective, or maybe to change the length of a match as well. I'm guessing this change will be really nice for a lot of you squid partiers out there. The shooting range looks much bigger than before, and you can see in the back that they brought back the bigger dummies that were in Splatoon 1, as well as adding a moving dummy in the air, which is a nice change too. We can briefly see that the bow will have three reticles, which shows how the shots will fire for people using it, and we can now practice hitting targets in between matches, which is helpful too. Ghosts are a quicker way to join up with friends already in a match, or friends with a room open, and we can now play Turf War with the friends of your choice, all on the same team. They actually implemented a replay mode, which is absolutely huge, especially for competitive players looking back at their gameplay to improve upon it. You can highlight certain parts of the match to skip right to it, and upload matches, I assume, via social media like YouTube or Twitter, which is really nice for players that want coaching but don't have a capture card. Instead of apartments, which was sadly something I really wanted, we'll obtain personal lockers, which we can customize and decorate inside and out, which is pretty nice touch. It items can be bought from Hot Lantis, which is run by the well-known Chirpy Chips band member Harmony. Also, little note, we can buy more than one sticker at a time. Along with being shown more banners and titles for our splat tags, we see an assortment of badges too, and it appears that some may be unlocked depending on your star power. For example, here we see some 4 star badges likely obtained by reaching a star power of 4 with those weapons, but as the cursor goes down to weapon badges with orange ink splatters, they are shown as 5 star badges instead. We can change the victory animations of our characters as well, and everything obtained from Hot Lances will be from the in-game catalog, which will change every 3 months for 2 years after the game's release. Earning points through online battles or Salmon Run will help you get even more items and seasonal gear as well from this shop. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna cover much on the table turf battle at the moment, but the mode looks... it looks pretty fun. I'll, I'll just wait. I'll just... I'll just wait until I actually have to try it. Okay, next. Salmon Run starts off with showing a whole new map, and we can see that the Wave Breaker, Reef Slider, Triple Ink Strike, Ink Jet, and Booyah Bomb specials will be available to be used in the mode as well. We get a glimpse of Snatchers taking three eggs through the air rather than just the ground, and also two more new boss salmonids called Slammin' Lid and Big Shot, which are basically the salmonid versions of Big Bubbler and Wave Breaker. Another neat feature with the Big Shot is that you can use the cannon to throw eggs closer to the basket. For the extra wave where you have to defeat the King Salmonid, you'll be given an egg cannon to fire golden eggs from other boss salmonids in order to deal more damage to it. In this extra wave you don't have to worry about collecting golden eggs anymore and the main objective is to just kill that. The big wave will happen every couple months where salmonids invade regular battle stages and I certainly hope we'll get more information about that over time. That looks amazing. For the most part, the objective in single player seems to be the same, where once again we play as Agent 3 in order to defeat the Octarians. We see elements taken from single player in the past, as we can see a zap fish that needs to be obtained, and Octo expansion with the same yellow fragments that were found at the end of every test. Various weapons we can see be used include the new hero shot, the bow, blaster, squiffer, and arrow spray. And similarly to Octo Expansion, some stages will have gimmicks limiting you on what you can use, such as this stage that only allows us to use the small fry to progress, or this stage that only allows the crab tank special to be used with no main or sub weapons. Strangely enough, one of the specials seems to be Splashdown, even though it's never been confirmed to be in the main game. So either it's confirmed as a whole or only for single player. I don't know much else about lore, but in this final clip here, you can definitely see Captain Cuttlefish being grabbed by something or someone as they fall down with Agent 3. Plaza posts are back, and it's always nice to see glorious works of art from our incredible community. Food has come back, but Krusty Sun has sadly been replaced. We'll just add another one to the list, I guess. And the shell will still be available for land play. 
Photo mode is no longer attached to Amiibo, but speaking of Amiibo, we can still have outfits attached to them and get exclusive gear as well, and oh my gosh, he is freaking adorable. I need him right now. Right now. Recon mode makes every map playable no matter the rotation and may have adjustable time limits since the clock is set to nearly one hour, which has never been seen before. Splatnet is basically the same with the exception of being able to look back at times you've had past ranks, badge counts, or preferred weapons. On the topic of post-release updates, X-Rank, League Battles, new weapons, and paid DLC will arrive later after the game's release, and Splatoon 3's first Invitational will happen September 5th at PAX West in Seattle. And now for the most anticipated news of all, and not to brag, but I had a feeling this would happen by the way, we have not one, certainly not two, but three idols named Deep Cut, consisting of Shiver, Fry, and my personal favorite, Big Man, Big Man Supremacy, all the way, look at this man go. We potentially have skippable news if this thing at the top left means we'd rather listen to the Splatcast than watch it, and the first Splatfest has been announced for August 27th with the theme being Rock, Paper, Scissors, since three idols means three different themes. Along with that, we have a new Turf War mode during Splatfest called Tri-Color Turf War, in which two members from the second and third place Splatfest teams will fight four members from the leading Splatfest team. Contesting and securing ultra signals from the center of the map seems to spawn unique sprinklers of doom given to you from the members of Deep Cut in order to increase your chances of ultimately winning the game. We received a ton of Splatoon 3 news on Wednesday and I absolutely cannot wait to hop on the game and see what else is in store for us. And with that, that is just about everything I could pull from the Splatoon 3 Direct, but if I missed some things, please feel free to let me know in the comments below, as well as telling me what you're most excited for about Splatoon 3. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you guys have a beautiful day, and as always, stay mellow, and I'll catch you later. Peace.